I think it's important that we tell the commission that acts of sexual harassment are within their jurisdiction and their purview. Because, Mr. Speaker, it was not clear before, and I think it is our obligation to clarify it. And, gentlemen from Russell, I don't think that's any small thing. I think it is important that we do that. Now, Mr. Speaker, I'm standing to comment on this amendment and to ask that the body support the amendment, and I believe we will. But I tell you, I also stand here on a point of personal preference, privilege rather, because while the gentleman from Russell says he's not here to point fingers, he's pointing lots of fingers this morning. And he is trying to make something political that should not be. When he says that there's been no effort to fill a vacancy on the commission, I can see why he would say that, because there is a vacancy, in fact, on the commission. What the gentleman does not know is the lengths that the Speaker's office has gone to, sir, to fill that vacancy, and the documentation and the list of names that have been submitted to the State Senate requesting that we, in fact, fill that vacancy. And I understand that he doesn't know that, but I think it's important that we say that here today, that this body has, in fact, on more than one occasion, tried to fill that vacancy, but gentlemen from Russell, that is also what this amendment does. It provides a mechanism so that if the two chambers, the LRC, is unable to agree on an appointment, which has been the case, that there is a secondary mechanism so that there will not be vacancies in the future. And that also is an important step for this body to take. 